Great Warriors and welcome back to another video. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, it's not necessarily a training vlog, but I do have a few things as always to share with you. So in this rest week, I wanted to kind of switch the, the, the view on things and uh, I wanted just to share with you how I make these videos uh, and kind of give you a little bit of the journey from when I started YouTube uh, to where I am now because a few of you requested it and uh, you know, I enjoy talking about this sort of stuff. So uh, this is actually about a week after I started filming this video, simply because uh, I ended up doing a lot of renovations and decorating in the house for the, the final room. And I kind of wanted to share with you at the end of this video, a little bit of a house tour, because it's something I've been working hard on, sort of behind the scenes, just as a personal project with my girlfriend over the past few months. Uh, and a lot of people have requested it. So at the end of the video, we're gonna go through that. When I'm talking about making YouTube videos, I'm gonna talk about you know, how I first started making videos, why I started making videos, and then also kind of how I make videos now. I'm gonna talk about the camera equipment, I'm gonna talk about the editing, all of that sort of good stuff. So if you are interested in it, stay around and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section down below. Just, you know, leave a comment uh, and let me know your thoughts. So I started making YouTube videos actually about five years ago now. And uh, let's be honest, initially they weren't the best things in the world, but as of all of these things, uh, you learn through the process of just doing. I had about three or so thousand followers on Instagram. And to be honest, it's actually a culmination of a few things. It was mainly coffee related stuff. I used to post like latte art, coffee stuff. Uh, and then I used to post a little bit of my workout things as I got more kind of into training and doing that. And it was actually a family member who suggested that I start making YouTube videos about this kind of just as an off cuff statement. And I thought, why not? Nothing more than that. Just literally like, here's me, here's what I'm doing. Here's a few things I've learned. I hope it helps you out. At the time, I started filming videos on one of these. Not even this one, this is an, a, an iPhone 10, A very smashed and battered iPhone 10. But initially, I, I literally just started with an iPhone 5. I used to just film my training sessions, film my training, film whatever was going on, super simple. So a lot of times I hear from people like, oh, what camera are you using, what this, what that? Especially nowadays, like with the new iPhone, the new like high-end Android phones, the cameras on them are so good that, to be honest, you really don't need a DSLR. I think about this sort of time I got to about maybe three, four, five thousand subscribers and again I was just documenting stuff and I decided to actually invest in the channel. So this is the first bit of equipment that I actually bought to make videos and it is a, uh, a Sony DCR-X100. I'm not sure what mark this is, I think it's a mark 2, it's an old one. It was about 220 pounds, 300 dollars ish at the time and yeah it didn't have a microphone, didn't have a lot of things, shot in 1080p at least. Uh, it, it's a decent camera and I still use it to this day, I use it as my second camera when I do like follow along routines, so there's a different angle. I was not making any money off YouTube at all. Um, I didn't make any money off YouTube at all until maybe like three years into it. I think this is probably only a year into it at this point. It's just, I enjoyed making videos, it was fun. And I enjoyed taking photos when I was traveling or when I was elsewhere. So it was an investment partly for YouTube, but just partly for, for general life. The next camera I bought from there was a Sony A6000 um, and I used this camera for a long time and I probably would still be using it to be honest if I hadn't have broken it, but <laughs> I did. So this is why I'm no longer using this camera. I used this pretty much up until I had about 50,000, 100,000 subscribers. I carried on using this Sony A6000 camera. I actually bought that camera when I finished university and that was at 10,000 subscribers. The camera was about 400 pounds, $500 ish. Uh, and I bought that camera with the intention that when I finished uni, I was going to give this a go for six months. I was going to try and do YouTube and that sort of thing as a job. Uh, and that was kind of like the, the investment that I made a better camera to make better videos and this sort of stuff. If it doesn't work out in six months, then I'm going to go get a proper job basically. And that kind of really takes us up to the present day. Oh, I guess I should share with you what I actually used to make videos on a day to day basis and a week to week basis. Here's what I use. So the camera I'm using at the moment is the Sony a6300, it's an APS-C sensor, so it's a little bit cropped. The reason I chose this camera is essentially, it's good value for money, it shoots in 4K, and it basically does everything I need it to do. My videos aren't particularly complicated. This camera covers everything very, very nicely. I pretty much only use one lens on this camera, and that is the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens. I've bought and experimented with various lenses. This has kind of been the one that seems to do everything really, really well. This is basically, the only lens that I use. It's actually equivalent to a 24 mil lens, so it's a little bit cropped in. It does everything from the talking clips that I do to the exercise clips that I do, and it makes everything look quite pretty. So I'm a big fan of this lens. I also sometimes use a Sony 35 mil f1.8 lens. 
um, but this one I don't use all that often, maybe sometimes for some more close-up stuff. To be honest, 99% of the time I shoot with a 16mm. Audio is probably the biggest thing, more so important than the visuals, the camera, you can make things look nice with just an iPhone. The one thing though that lacks is generally the microphone. If you have decent audio, it makes your video so much nicer to listen to anyway. So I use two mics. Um, partly out of laziness. Number one, the Rode Video Mic Go. It's not necessarily the best microphone, but it's actually okay when it's kind of windy outside, which is why I use it for more out and about sort of stuff. And it's like plug and play, you literally plug it in and it's ready to go. The other microphone I use is the Rode Video Mic Pro. This mic actually sounds significantly better. It does sound really good, but the main reason I don't use it all the time is most of the time I forget to turn it on. So I'll film a bunch of stuff and then I'll realize I have no audio. So it kind of ruins everything. And I've done that far too many times. That is the one that I would recommend. It's the one, it's the, it's the one that sounds the best. I also use a lav mic for pretty much all of my follow alongs and my headshots, just because it sounds better. This is actually the first microphone I ever bought and I bought to go along with the first camera I bought. It was literally 40 quid off Amazon. It's the Rode lav mic. Um, it's an omnidirectional one. You can plug it straight into your phone, which is the thing I like most about it. And they sound pretty good. To my ears, I can't tell the difference between that and one that costs like 200 pounds. So I'm just gonna stick with the 40 pound one. To mount it all up, I've got the Joby Gorillapod. This is the standard vlogger, uh, YouTuber camera stand. It is actually pretty good to be fair to it. Uh, I've bought various ones over the years. I started with the one kilogram one, then I bought the three kilogram one, and this one is the five kilogram one. This is the only one that I've bought that's actually lasted more than like six to eight months because the joints get all worn out. So if you are gonna buy one, buy the big bad boy. It's, it's worth the money. The other ones just kind of suck. And they're just like really easy to move around and don't really do anything to hold the camera in place. But that's really it for camera gear. I like to keep things nice and simple. I have a bigger stand as well, which is this one that I use to, to film like things where I need more range than the Joby has. I'll just link this one down below. I can't know what it's called. Links to everything will be in the description down below. I'll probably use Amazon affiliate links. So if you do want to buy one of these things and you use the link, it will help me out as well. So I appreciate that. Right, so next up is uh, video editing. I guess that's kind of important when it comes to making videos. Um, I personally use Adobe Premiere Pro. The main reason for this is that I taught myself to video edit uh, a long time ago when I was like 14, 15, because I used to make Call of Duty videos, which uh, if you are shocked by that statement, I've made a whole video about that and I'll link that video down below, but yeah. So I learned originally using Adobe when I was at university. We used the Adobe Suite, Photoshop, After Effects, all of that sort of stuff to make things. So I kind of just know how to use Premiere Pro, which is not necessarily the best on Mac. But as I said, I'm just kind of used to it and I like how it works. That kind of brings me on to the computer that I use. Unfortunately, I don't use anything particularly fancy. I use a 2016 MacBook Pro. It's actually the old one, not the new one with the touch bar. Just a 15 inch one, Mac spec, 16 gig of RAM, one terabyte SSD. It's got a graphics card in there as well. It, it does the job for me personally, I, although I do video editing, and this computer is getting on five years old now, it still seems to manage things pretty well. Uh, but that is, yeah, like a super quick, this is how I make my videos. Uh, hopefully that answers all the questions that people have been asking in various videos over the years. Uh, if you want to give me any suggestions, I'm always open to suggestions like, at the end of the day, I don't know the most when it comes to tech. So if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, as promised, let's move on to a little bit of a house tour. So this room right here, this is uh, the office. bedroom in this house uh, but this is mainly where I work and mainly where I now shoot videos it's nice to have like a consistent place to shoot videos on I feel like that adds a nice professional thing and it, it, it also looks pretty cool as well above the setup there something you probably don't actually see in a lot of videos these are Sean Connery when he's playing James Bond and he's with I can't remember the Bond girl but they're basically they're doing handstands on the beach as part of filming I believe the film is Doc Snow I thought it was really cool one of my clients had it and uh, obviously in the middle is the YouTube 100k plaque as well. On the wall here is just a couple of IKEA pegboards. This is where all the camera gear kind of just hangs and sits and receipts and other things. I think it's super useful, but at the moment everything's being used, which is why it's not on the wall. I highly rate these. I think they look really cool and you can make them look awesome as well. Next we have the desk. This is an Urkel table. I bought it for like 50 pounds second hand. I took the tabletop off and then the bottom, the legs, these are the IKEA standing desk so they can go up and down depending on how you want to sit. 
all stand as the case may be. Behind the desk is some sound foam just because it helps reduce the echo in here and uh, just the, the daily reminder. Next uh, we have the bedroom. This is the last room that we decorated. I'm really happy of how it turned out. Uh, let me know what you think of the design choices down below, especially the black ceiling. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. Finally, this is the, uh, the downstairs. Kind of lounge and then there's a kitchen behind. There was actually a wall where this gap is. That was a wall with a door and uh, I chose to knock it through when we first came here. And then we also put down this really nice hardwood floor because doing handstands on a hard floor is so much better than a carpet. It looks nicer as well, but it was mainly for handstands. My favorite thing in this room is definitely this guy, the, uh, the cheese plant. You can't beat a good bit of plants in the house. Uh, underneath the stairs, we've got the coffee, this is the coffee corner. Life is too short for bad coffee. Nothing is truer. And yeah, this is the, the coffee drinking chair. Finally, we have the coffee machine next to some washing up, but <laughs> mainly the coffee machine. This is a Bezerra Magica uh, coffee machine. This is actually quite old now. This is like seven or eight years old. I bought it when I first went to university. I sold my car and because I couldn't afford a car at university and I bought a coffee machine because that seemed like a logical investment at the time uh, but yeah I've had it ever since and uh, it's top-notch uh, but the coffee machine we could we could have a whole video talking about coffee in fact I probably will make a whole video talking about coffee because that seems like fun but yeah that's a very very brief tour of uh, my home and how I make these videos again I'd love to hear your thoughts on how this one turned out I'm personally really happy with it the people who watch these videos are certainly responsible for the ability for me to call this my job and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of share that with you. And again, just say thank you. Like I'm so grateful that I can do this as my job. Something I love, I genuinely really enjoy doing. Like I just, I work all the time, I guess work. It's just what I do, it's my life. <laughs> so massive thank you again for that. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. If you have any questions, as I said, about anything covered in this video, leave a comment in the comment section down below. While you're down there, there's all the links to everything in the description and also that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But other than that, that's been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week. And